What's happening, beautiful people of the internet? It's your boy Ed from TechSource, and today we're gonna to be building a high end gaming PC that's gonna be able to play RTX titles easy, easily. Fun little fact, actually, I've never played any game with ray tracing enabled. So I'm really excited to build this and what better way to test out its ray tracing performance than with the newly released Minecraft with RTX support. But anyways, these are the parts I'll be using in the build. Uh, let's go over them real quickly. The processor we're going with is the Ryzen 7 3700X. This is currently the best value eight core 16 thread processor currently available in the market. It's a great processor for not only gaming, but streaming and multitasking as well. The extra cores will help out a ton when you're encoding H.264 while streaming. And of course, it's gonna drastically reduce exporting times compared to a quad core CPU. I'm not just building a gaming PC here, by the way, guys. This is gonna be used as a part-time workstation as well. So if I'm not gaming, I'm gonna be doing a lot of work on it. And since the budget is a lot higher, I decided to go with a beefier motherboard. The MSI X570 Gaming Pro Carbon actually has the features and specs that I'm looking for. So this board is actually using a server grade PCB, which offers up to three times the heat resistance compared to standard PCBs, and it offers up to 30% better signal transfer. The heatsink design is also a lot better on this board. They're thicker and have better coverage over the MOSFETs, which will effectively help lower temps while overclocking, and of course, it will prolong the life of the motherboard. Now, 16 gigs of RAM is more than plenty for gaming, but since I'll be using this as a workstation system as well, I decided to go with a 32 gigabyte kit from Corsair. And since we all know that Ryzen systems run better on faster RAM, I went with a 3600 megahertz rated RAM with a seal timing of 16. Like I mentioned in the budget build I did recently, you always want the highest frequency rated RAM with the lowest CL timing for the best performance when it comes to Ryzen builds. So keep that in mind when you're shopping around. In order to get those super high frame rates with RTX on, we gotta go with a capable GPU, which is why I decided to go with the RTX 2080 Super Seahawk X from MSI. I thought I would change it up and do something a bit different. So this GPU actually has a dedicated AIO cooler attached to it. And the idea behind this is to separate the cooling to offer better temps and potentially more overclocking headroom. Now, since we're on the X570 platform, we gotta take advantage of PCI Gen 4 speeds. For those of you that don't know, PCI Gen 4 offers much faster read and write speeds over Gen 3. So it just makes sense going with a Gen 4 capable M.2 SSD drive like the Corsair MP600. And finally, the case we're gonna throw all this in is the Corsair IQ465X mid tower chassis. It comes with three LL120 RGB fans in the front with a fan hub in the back to control the lighting and two tempered glass panels. Now I do have Corsair's new QL fans that I wanna use instead of those because these actually have the RGB rings on both sides. So you can flip them any way you want, use them as intake or exhaust, and it won't affect the RGB lighting. Now these aren't the best choice when it comes to static pressure, obviously, the ML series do much better in cooling, but the QLs do perform slightly better than the LL series. But either way, these are arguably one of the best looking RGB fans right now in the market. But yeah, these are pretty much all the parts I'll be using for the build. Let's cue the music, put it together, and see what it can do. All right, so yeah, the build is finally done and it actually turned out a little better than I expected because I was kind of worried on how the GPU would look inside the case, but it worked out. 
I was able to put the cooler in the back using a push and pull configuration and I used a couple of Velcro straps to tie the tubes together. So it actually doesn't look that bad. One minor gripe I have with the case um, is the clearance issue with the top radiator mount. Unfortunately, I was not able to fit my Corsair AIO on the top because that just wasn't enough clearance. The fans would come in contact with my RAM. So for those looking to buy the 465X, make sure you are using low profile RAM, otherwise you won't be able to fit a radiator up there. And instead you're gonna have to mount it in the front like how I did. Other than that, um, I had no issues building inside the case. In fact, I think it's a really good looking case with the tempered glass front and side panels. This one's actually slightly tinted, which I actually like. And of course, I can't forget about the included fan hub in the back, which was super convenient uh, because it saved me time in having to install a Node Pro. I just hooked up all six of my fans on there and called it a day. Uh, but yeah, overall, a very solid case. Airflow is also really good. You know, I got three fans as intake uh, and for exhaust, I do have two on the top and then two in the rear as push and pull. The temps are looking really good with the CPU idling around 39 degrees Celsius on average and the GPU temps idling around 33 degrees Celsius. At peak performance while gaming, we can see that the CPU averages around 45 degrees while the GPU peaking at 60 degrees at its highest point. So really low temps from both the CPU and GPU while still remaining extremely silent. The fans were actually kept on stock profile. I didn't have to set a fan curve because even while gaming, the temps were low enough for the fans to stay on the lowest RPM setting. All right, so now let's jump into some gameplay with RTX on. So immediately I noticed what a difference RTX makes in Minecraft. It really transforms the game completely and adds this insane layer of realism by introducing new elements to the game. One of the biggest things you'll notice is how much more light there is in the game. It really feels like night and day, literally, when you switch on RTX. It feels like the whole world is more alive in a sense compared to how it looked without ray tracing and I can't help but feel like it's more enjoyable to play, like it's making me want to explore every part of this world. They also introduced new textures in the game. Each block will now have four different types of textures so that you can tell how rough and reflective it is. For example, I walked into one of the demo rooms and I immediately was able to tell the difference between the textures. Now this brown reflective surface is supposed to be hardwood flooring while the rest was carpet. As you can tell, there is no reflection on anywhere else on the ground. Introducing light also means that there are gonna be shadows and I just love how it's able to add a lot of depth in the game. I mean, look how RTX transforms this boring, lifeless waterfall. We can see light now, shadows, reflections, it just feels more alive. Of course, with the added light feature, this means colors are more vibrant, and I didn't really notice how much of a difference it really was until I stepped into this one room where it showcased all the elements. You know, we got the lights up top, the mirrors for reflection, and the colors on the ground. And if we turn RTX off, well, you get the idea. Now this all sounds super exciting and all, but unfortunately it does come with a cost. On average, I was getting around 174 FPS with RTX off, and once enabling it, I dropped all the way down to 45. However, with DLSS on, it almost doubled the average FPS to 85, making it playable. DLSS is a new feature that improves frame rates while offering the user the same RTX experience. Basically, it's able to do this by rendering out fewer pixels and using AI to sharpen higher resolution images. With DLSS on, you can expect to get much better performance out of your card without sacrificing the RTX experience. And in my case, I couldn't really tell the difference between the two. I would have to really look at it closely side by side in order to point out the small differences. So if you're planning on playing Minecraft in real-time ray tracing, I do recommend picking up the RTX 2070 Super because you can average out at least 60 FPS playing with DLSS on. Sadly, with the RTX 2060 KO, you won't be able to hit the 60 FPS threshold and it just wouldn't be as enjoyable. And buying an RTX 2080 Super just doesn't seem cost effective if you're only buying it to play Minecraft. I think we can all agree how far real-time ray tracing has come since it was announced back in August of 2018. And honestly, I'm really excited to see how game developers use this technology for future games. And I think with a little bit of uh, optimization, we can see improved performance as well. 
But that's pretty much it for the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, consider dropping a like. I'll drop a link to all the parts I used in the build down below if you guys want to check it out. I love you beautiful faces as always. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.